All right, welcome back to Badger Blitz TV, your Rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics, from the recruiting trail to inside Camp Randall Stadium to on the court at the Kohl's Center. I'm Matt Perkins, joined as always by Rivals.com Midwest recruiting analyst, and a man I'm very proud to call a friend, Clint Cosgrove. Good to see you as always, buddy. Always a pleasure, man. Uh, one of my favorite things I do all week. So. Uh, that, you are far too kind. You are far too kind. So uh, a lot has happened again since we talked last week. Got a couple more commitments for the Badgers. Uh, two guys, uh, Roderick, a.k.a. Trey Pierce and Nate White. If you guys haven't already, please make sure to check out Clint's conversation with Trey Pierce. You can see that over on BadgerBlitz.com. You had an awesome interview with him. I came away super impressed with him. I'm really excited about what he's going to bring to the team. But you, if you're more interested in Trey, go check out his interview. I want to talk about Nate White just a minute here before we get into some more on the trail stuff. I personally, you know, I, I can see the case for Nate White as, you know, an impact player, but I'm not 100% sold. So sell me on Nate White as a prospect and how he can be an impact player for Wisconsin. Yeah, well, uh, I think we start with he's an in-state kid. Uh, Wisconsin is built on in-state kids. There's a pride of playing for your home state team. You grow up a Wisconsin fan. Uh, you dream of playing for the Badgers. And, uh, you know, when you get that opportunity, it changes a lot. Like, you feel an extra level of responsibility. I know I did. Um and uh, you see what some of the guys who weren't as highly recruited out of Wisconsin that have ended up at Wisconsin and the success they've had. And, uh, you know, I see Nate as that guy. He has a dynamic skill set. He is very different than what we have in the backfield or what Wisconsin has in the backfield right now. Um, you know, you look at the, well, obviously the current running back situation, big backs, who are going to run down your face in the hole. Um, and then we get the addition of keys, you know, who's a big physical back as well. And sometimes uh, you need that home run threat. And one of the things that we talked about was, do we know if keys is a home run threat? Not saying he's not. I see, uh, I see why is having that potential. Um, I feel that his game speed is faster than he even is if he was going to go out and test, if he was going to go out and run a 100-meter dash. Um, I like what he brings to the table because he's different than what you have right now, okay? You can stack your running back room with players that fit your scheme, that fit what you're trying to do, but when that doesn't work, what do you do next? So I think Nate White is a great example of what do we do next? This is a guy who can line up in the backfield. He can hit the edge. Um, he can go in motion out, play it uh, in the slot. He can line up as an X for all I care. Um, he's got great ball skills. He is awesome in the open field. Uh, you just see him like there's a different, he has a different gear when people are chasing him in the open field. And that's what I really like about him. Um, and you combine that with being an in-state kid and then the level of athletic ability. And then you look at uh, the current, you know, backfield, he brings something that we don't have that Wisconsin mm -hmm. does not have right now. So, uh, if that doesn't sell you, I don't know what does. You know what? You're, you're a pretty good salesman there, there, Clint. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. The Badgers are going to need some salesmen on their staff because it is official visit season. It is camp season. So we're getting a lot of guys on campus and really what's back to a normal recruiting cycle for the first time since pre-pandemic. The last Feels couple good. of recruiting cycles have been absolutely nuts. You know it. I know it. Anyone who follows college football knows that we're back to a standard recruiting cycle. And so we can get to know these kids a little bit better. One of the guys that Wisconsin's going to be having on campus for an official visit is Zach Ortworth, who is out of St. Louis. You know St. Louis very well, obviously. I watched the film. You watched the film. You're the expert here. What I see is a blocking first kid who can catch the ball, but is necessarily going to make anyone miss in traffic. Uh, you know, I know that a lot of people like him at 
Iowa. He has a couple future casts on Rivals.com in for Iowa. He's the kind of kid that Wisconsin and Iowa seem to go after every single year. What do you see out of uh, out of Zach? And you know what? What do you see? You know what do you like about his game? So Zach, well, one, I like his pedigree. Uh, he comes from a fantastic program. You just signed one of their players in, uh, in uh, Chris Brooks Jr. Uh, the head coach at uh, SLU is uh, many remember uh, the Super Bowl where the Rams, what did they tackle him on the one-yard line against, what was it, the Titans? Uh, oh, it was like the closest Kevin Dyson on the one yard line. Uh, yeah. To, yeah. To prevent you know, to, to, to keep the Super Bowl, you know, for St. Louis basically right. Yeah. Game. Yeah. So uh, that's his head coach at SLU. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that. So that wasn't a nice uh, Williams. Uh, was it? Who, who was it that made that time? Mike Jones, Mike Jones, who Mike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and Jones has been, he was a head coach at the Division II level. Uh, I know he's coached some other places in high school. He's the head coach at uh, SLU right now. But um, I like the pipeline being built there. You got Chris in there. Um, you look at the players that they have coming up. Uh, Ryan Wingo, who is, I'm not ready to say he's the best in the nation in his class, but he's up there. <laughs> Um, he's one of six, five star, uh, players that we have right now. Um, what I see from Zach is a great frame and a high ceiling. Uh, you mentioned him being a fantastic blocker right now. He is that, and it's not because he's just this big muscled up kid that is, you know, just overpowering people. He's doing that because of the want to. Um, you know, you see his athleticism, it's not put on display as much as you would like when you're looking for a pass catching tight end. But at the same time, there are times where you see him split out at the X and he's stretching the field and making plays. When I see him get up underneath, uh, whether it be a second level defender, a defensive end, uh, he uses his hands. He has great bend, great foot drive. Um, so when you see those things out of a high school player, especially a young one, and I think we forget that these guys are still, they're barely, you know, they haven't even started their senior year of high school. And so when I yeah, look I mean, at some him, of them I haven't even turned 17 yet. They're still 16. Exactly. Like, it's crazy. Like they might not even turn 17 until this summer. Like, you know, it's, it, it, it's nuts, man. Yeah, no, it is. And, and like with Zach, like he's a great defensive end too. So anytime you have a guy with his frame, he flashes the athletic ability to be a pass catcher. Maybe you don't see it every play uh, on his film, but then I look him get up underneath guys and understand leverage, understand how to play with high energy. Um, and then you just look at the upside from there because his frame is fantastic and he's far from done growing. So oh, if he yeah. can keep that level of athleticism Definitely. that you see him flash when he does line up outside, you know, going on a deep fade to the end zone or stuff like that. Um, you know, I like the upside there. Is he a finished product? No. Uh, but I also understand uh, why the Badgers would offer him, why they would want to get in on him. And I, he, he does, he has a lot of upside yep. and you look at, um, you know, you bring up Iowa and not to bring up the Wisconsin enemy, but, uh, they do a pretty darn good job of uh, evaluating guys with his similar yeah. size, frame, and skill set. And um, I think that only backs up the evaluation that Wisconsin has done. Uh, it obviously helps with connecting with that school, with the St. Louis area. And I think Zach has a lot of upside. Yeah, I, I think that's gonna definitely going to be somewhere we're going to see even more and more Badgers coming from in the coming years, If assuming we have – some sort of stability on the staff. No matter where he ends up, whether it's Iowa, Wisconsin, or somewhere else, he definitely feels to me like he is a prototypical Badger recruit, right? You know, he is great frame, tough, maybe a little bit under-recruited at this point in the process. Every year, we've got some of these lesser-known guys who go to camps, end up getting an offer, and committing very soon thereafter, or they really sort of sort of 
pop at one of these camps and that leads to a ton more offers you know are there a couple of guys give us a couple names of guys who you think that sort of could fit that mold who would could sort of come in and press at camp for wisconsin maybe guys who don't really have a lot in the way of like power five offers right now who we can keep our eye out for yeah i think there's definitely a couple guys uh I was kind of telling you this earlier, back when I was doing the scouting, I would, before the camp season, I would have 10, sometimes 15 guys that I knew were power five guys that I had seen in person, evaluated at camps, got to know all of those things. Um, And I would send out that list to the clients that I worked with. And I said, when you get to these camps, these guys are going to be power five offer kids and just keep an eye on them. And I, I think the hit rate with that was uh, a good 95% plus. Now, that being said, um, I don't have the time to sit and find these kids anymore. I'm more covering guys who are getting recruited, uh, worried about you know where they rank and all that sort of thing. But there are a couple guys that I've kept my eye on, um, guys that I've seen in person. And guys that I feel pretty strongly about that could fit that profile. Um, now, uh, I'm not guaranteeing any of these guys are, are multi no, I mean, we're, we're, guys. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to say, who are the kids that you know we see that seem like the type of kids with a strong camp performance that would historically earn an offer from Wisconsin, given their you know skill, size, et cetera? Yeah. So uh, let's go through three names that come to mind. Um, kid named uh, Briggs Bartosh. Uh, Briggs Bartosh. Listen, you sent me his film before we started recording. And I I watched this kid for like five minutes and I got really, really excited. It's like, ooh, okay. Like, I didn't expect to see that, but I enjoyed that. He's He's a little shifty. He's got some moves. I mean, the dude can fly. He's 5'10", 180. Um, you know, he plays at Park Hill, what is it? South Park Hill South in uh mm-hmm. in Kansas, Kansas City, City yeah. area. The kick can fly. I mean, he's a legit four or five electronic 40 kid. He can make you miss in, in space. Uh, like you said when you were watching the film, he's like, he just dropped a dime at quarterback. Uh the kid can do pretty much anything. Um, you know, he's just got, I believe, army and navy right now. Uh, and to me, that's the type of kid that Wisconsin gets in on and people are like, how did he end up at Wisconsin? And then the kid goes and balls out. So he is one that I'd keep an eye on. He has legit speed. He has legit ability to make you miss in space. Um, and he's got the verified times to back it. I mean, four yeah, five like four five laser, four five laser is something. Yeah. People don't realize how good that is. I mean, he had over, I believe, a 40-inch vertical at our camp. Um, Now, I know there's a lot of different ways that people measure verticals, and that can be kind of lost in translation. But uh, no matter what method that 40 inches came from, that's, that's a vertical, and that shows how explosive the kid is. We had him at a rival's camp. Uh, He earned his way in to... Uh, the invite camp as well. So he's a kid I'd keep an eye on. Like I said, no guarantees, but uh, the kid's got some talent. Um, I told you earlier that he kind of reminds me of Jim coming out of high school. Jim, that, that uh, Jimmy praise, Leonard. Jim Leonard. I mean, that is about as high a praise as you can give uh, someone who, uh, you know, around the Wisconsin program. It really is. But I mean, like, you look at his athletic ability and his skill set, and think about this Jim. Unless he went to Wisconsin, he might have ended up at Whitewater or Stevens Point. You know, uh, Briggs does have the academy offers, so mm-hmm. like he's gonna get recruited. He's going somewhere on scholarship, but I mean, to me, that's a kid you keep an eye on. Now, another one is a kid named Abu Sama the Third. Now, the reason I know about Abu is. I went to a little high school in Iowa called Southeast Polk because they had a couple of good players named Xavier Nwapa, who's a five-star and signed with Iowa this year. And then they also have a 2020, 
uh, three 2023 offensive lineman, Caden Proctor, who is another five star, uh, probably a future NFL talent, uh, can go anywhere he wants. Uh, but he played at the same high school as these guys. And so when I get there, just my old scouting mentality, first thing I ask is, Coach, who's the next guy? And he points over to this guy over there. He's like, Abu. And I'm like, okay, so what's special about him? You know, you look at him. I mean, great length, but, you know, normal size guy, 5'10", 5'11", 185, 190 pounds. He said he's a, he's a 24-foot long jumper. I was like, okay, that got me a little excited. Um, that is not normal. And then <laughs> I watched. Not normal. Yeah, not no, normal it's not normal. Well, <laughs> wait till you hear what he jumped this year. And uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on this kid during practice. He was doing uh, kick returns. Uh, you know, he was the running back, but coach is like, you know what? Like at the next level, he may be even better as a corner. And so that really stood out to me. And then we go to the game, and there are multiple Division I prospects in the game, including Xavier Mwapa, uh, Caden Proctor. The other team had a couple kids as well. There was another kid, three, four kids who signed at the FCS or MAC level. And probably the best player in the game was Abu Sama. And when you turn on the film, it's funny, because when you see it in person, I'm like, kid's a dude. I was like, this kid is an absolute dude. We put stars on him before he had any, any offers. And that rarely happens, but I felt very confident in doing so because of what I saw, not only in practice, not only what I knew from track, but then what I saw in the game. And, uh, the film, although it tells the story a lot of the time, it doesn't always tell the whole story. And, uh, Abu Sama special. He jumped twenty four feet ten inches this year. That that is mind blowing. Th- those are those are national like national championship oh, yeah. level numbers. Those are like, no question. I mean, those are Paul Hubbard coming out of high school numbers for you Badger fans who remember twenty years ago when Paul Hubbard came out. He was the national champion in the triple jump. He was, I believe, he was a national record holder for a high school like he was the great one of the greatest jumpers in high school history like he was unbelievable that's the same level of like athleticism we're talking about that's phenomenal stuff yeah i mean it's big time i mean like if he wants to go and run track in college on a scholarship he can do that oh, yeah. you know and then you add in like i mean he's a sub 1100 or sub 11 second 100 guy He's got an impressive 200 time. Like, I didn't even realize those were part of his track equation. I thought he worked all on long jump. I think that's just natural ability where he does that. Um, Now, we had Abu in our camp (laughs) in Indianapolis, and uh, he was not invited to the invite group, but he certainly earned his way in because he ran like four or five something electronics. So, um, Abu just picked up offers from Southern Illinois and Northern Iowa. And those are the only schools that have offered them. And when you think about elite level athleticism and you're looking for a guy who maybe the other big boys haven't gotten on, I look at him and I'm like, if I am at the very least a Mac school, I'm, I'm taking a chance on this kid. Because yeah, you've got to bet on the athleticism, right? No question. And you've he's a to. great kid. And he's a, he, and he has a great football skill set. And then I talk about, you know, he's a standout at running back, but the coach says he might be a better corner, you know? So uh, maybe I'm missing something, but uh, to me, he's at minimum a group of five kid. And uh, I mean, uh, I, I bet you if you took 90%, 99% of the current Wisconsin football roster and asked them to get in a long jump competition with Abu, um, I don't know if anybody's beating him. And- Abu would have finished 12th at last year's NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships with that. See, one. that's incredible. And he can play football. How yeah. does the kid not have group of five offers? At the very minimum, like it yeah. drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, he would have. Yeah, it, it would have been second in the Big Ten, in twelfth in the NCAA. And he's a junior in high school. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, that, so, is, that is absurd stuff. That is absolutely yeah. Absurd. So let's get him on board, man. Let's get him. Let's get him up to campus. That's what I want to see. So I think we're going to have to wrap it up there. Can I get one more? You got one more guy for us? Okay, let's hit it. I can leave leave it for another episode. No, 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 no. You already got us here. Two out of three ain't bad, but three out of three is perfection, Clint. You're the perfect guest, so what have you got for us? All right, and uh, I hate to do this because his only offer is from my dad at, uh, my dad's currently the defensive coordinator at Long Island University. Uh, He went and did that. He was the linebackers coach at Texas Tech last year. One of his good friends got the head coaching job at Long Island, so he decided to go there. And they are the only team that has offered this kid right now, but he's an in-state Wisconsin kid. His name is Keeney Parks. Keeney Parks is a 24-foot long jumper. (laughs) He can also run very well. He also, at the Ray Lewis camp recently, won the MVP. And you got to understand at these camps, uh, that's put on by Under Armour, ESPN. Um, they're typically not picking an MVP that doesn't have a lot of power five offers. Keeney went out there and was the best player on the day. At the end of it, when he won the MVP award, Ray Lewis took off his diamond necklace and put it around him and awarded him that. And, uh, you know, like I said, Long Island's his only offer right now. Hopefully this doesn't ruin it from my dad getting him at Long Island. But uh, he's definitely a kid that needs mention, and he's an in-state kid. So for me, um, well, I'll leave my personal opinions alone. But, if, <laughs> you know, if uh, if I'm in Wisconsin, I'd probably, I, I, I'd probably take a close look. So. I mean, he- You've got me sold, but again, I'm I'm probably I'm probably a mark. Like, let's face it. Like, you're you're gonna sell me on these track kids any day. So, we really appreciate that. Speaking, uh, you know, uh, speaking of that, you know, your dad used to coach at Wisconsin inside linebackers coach. There's a new inside linebacker opening at Wisconsin now. Bill Sheridan is out. You you know anything or have any comments there for us? Uh, I really don't know anything. I wish I did. Um, I haven't talked to my dad recently, but I've been feeling my mom would let me know, uh, if Wisconsin reached out, uh, yeah, it'd be cool if my dad ended up back there and, uh, he can still coach and recruit. So I know that, but, uh, yeah, no, he's in a good place. I haven't heard too many other names, uh, for the position. It seems like they're kind of keeping things in house for now. Uh, but I also know time's running out and they're going to have to make a new, uh, a move soon. And I don't know a lot of guys that are just out there and available, um, you know, that have the, uh, the background to do, uh, yeah. a, a job like coaching linebackers at Wisconsin. So I, I'd imagine they'll move on it quick. Um, yeah, I, I would be lying if I uh, didn't say that I'd love it. My dad got a call at some point, but, um, no, uh, he's very happy at Long Island, and uh, I know Wisconsin will make a great hire no matter who it is. And uh, I like what they're doing right now. They're on a roll recruiting, and uh, they're they're doing some great things. And uh, now, be interesting to see how everything plays out. Yeah, I, I, next time or one of these times, I want to talk to you a little bit more about Mickey Turner and how you see sort of the recruiting department developing under him. But that's for the future because we've taken up enough of Clint's time. And we got to get back to it. He's got to get back to evaluating prospects and doing great interviews with them, like the one with Trey Pierce that you can find on badgerblitz.com. So make sure to stay in touch with Clint on social media at rivals underscore Clint. And make sure you're visiting badgerblitz.com, your number one source for all things Badger athletics on the rivals.com network to stay up to date on everything uh, for me. Check out my weekly podcast with Matt Bernstein. We're believing Badger it's a banger. football. We love it. Clint is a repeat guest. That's B-L-E-A-V in Badger football. Me, former Badger captain, the Hebrew hammer, Matt Bernstein. Uh, We cut it up with a bunch of Badgers uh, every week. We we have a good time talking to people in and around the program. So we'd appreciate it if you check that out. Uh, Later this summer, we'll have Clint on to break down some film of some uh, current and former prospects, including Bernie's high school film. Is a is genuinely a work of art. It's genuinely a work of art. <laughs> it really is. 
So I had so much fun texting with you guys when we were watching that film together. Um, yeah, I can't wait to do that. That'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So listen, Clint, appreciate it as always, brother. And we will see all you guys next week. And uh, until next time, take it easy, bud. You the same, man. Have a good one.